Good evening, everyone. Hi. I I believe we are live for the Pisces New Moon Divine Feminine Astrology Reading. And there's a smudge on my screen. Okay. Oh, it's good to be here with you on this cold evening. Um, cold up here in New England, coast of Maine. It is new moon time again. It seems like I've been here once a week or more for all of the astrology events. I have been closely following the whole Venus retrograde. And this new moon is actually the completion of the Venus retrograde that began way back on December 19th, 2021. And it's also part of the new moon portal, the, this energy portal that opened yesterday on February 27th when, at dawn, my time, when Venus, Mars, Vesta, and the moon all converged on in the 24th, 25th degree of Capricorn. And the moon has moved on. Uh, we are... It's in, in Aquarius now. It's heading towards its rendezvous with the sun for the new moon on Wednesday midday. But the other three, Mars, Vesta, Venus, are moving together these last few degrees to hook up with Pluto. And this is all energy that is active now, has been active for a while, and something really shifted at dawn on the 27th and it's just going to keep shifting it's like a portal that opened and it's going to open some more and it's going to open some more drive a mac truck through that portal so let's see what are we carrying what are we hauling in our mac truck or what are we not hauling that's a little bit more of what the moon's about I personally think this is thrilling astrology. It is personal, intimate, deep, magical, and there is so much going on that I have notes. So unless spirit throws my notes away, I'll be glancing down now and then to make sure I don't leave out anything important. I will mention the backdrop. Pisces New Moon 2022. It is happening on Wednesday at 1235 Eastern Time, March 2nd. And who knows what the world will look like in less than two days. But we are in a time, a time that I think some of us who grew up in the 60s thought was over. And it is, you know, there's, there's an invasion going on. Um, so I, I am dedicating the energies of this new moon as they move through me to the people of the Ukraine and to everyone else, every other people on this planet who have suffered conquest, invasion, loss of civil rights, loss of basic human rights, whoever the perpetrator may be. So that covers a lot of territory. And I'm going to leave it at that. You know what I'm talking about. So this thrilling astrology is the opportunity for each of us to shift, to shift our own consciousness and together shift the consciousness of the planet. Portals are for shifting. They are like doorways, thresholds. They mean you were here, you were in this state, you go through the portal metaphorically and new things become available to you. New things are possible. You leave something behind and you make space for something new to be created or born. So you will see as I go through 
this chart, how this is working. So when I look at the chart, we see the sun and moon, like the chart is here. The sun and moon are in Pisces at 12.07. They are together. A new moon is an exact conjunction of the sun and the moon. And there are a lot of other conjunctions going on. It's as if all the planets are inspired by Mars and Venus and Vesta and their menage a trois in, um, in Capricorn. So I'm going to go through the other conjunctions and then come back to this quattro conjunction that is setting the stage and setting up the energy for everyone else. So this is the new moon in Pisces. Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. It carries 12th house energy. That means the deep unconscious the transcendental, the dream world, the altered states. You are gathering cosmic consciousness through your mind and body and getting ready to shift. Because when the sun goes into Aries at the equinox, we're starting a new astrological cycle, a new year. And that new consciousness will carry us through the next year. So this new moon, new moons are times of going within, a time when our intuition and our emotions are heightened. In fact, the new moon is probably more about uh, stirring up things deep inside. And oh, I've got something itching my nose, excuse me. So this is an inward, intuitive, dreamlike, mystical, and farewell to the year new moon. It's a new moon for silence and listening. Listen to what is inside of you. You have questions. We all have questions about our lives. What do I do? How do I deal with this? Why am I in so much pain? How do I relate to what's going on in the world? What can I contribute? We all have this going on and you know the answer. It's inside of you. So this new moon gives you an opportunity to go inside and see what, what's there. What is your answer? What truth is bubbling up to guide you in answering your questions? And if you know where Pisces lands on your natal chart, you can be very clear about what part of your life or your mind is, um, is really going to activate in this shift of consciousness. Um, there is a superpower within you. Uh, it might be where your deepest wounds lie. It might be where your greatest strengths lie. Those two may lie in the same place, but you are, if you know where that is in your natal chart, it becomes really valuable information for you to use to create and work with what's going on in the world. So, um, my example is this moon lands in my fourth house which is absolutely perfect because the fourth house is the house of childhood, your immediate family, the bosom of your family, the dining table, uh, the, things, the things you learned about how to survive, how to live, who you are as part of your family system. And you also learn um, you all, what are the secrets that you don't talk about. You, you become infused with the ancestral secrets, traumas, mysteries, and strengths, all of it. So I am going to be listening at this new moon to um, healing some old wounds and looking at what I'm still carrying for 60 years or more from my family system as that I learned as a child. 
Now also in my fourth house, also in Pisces, the new moon is conjunct another conjunction, Jupiter and Nessus at 14 Pisces. Jupiter is the expander and the amplifier, everything he touches. Now, he's generally seen as a benefic. That means he gives good things, brings good, good luck. You, you see opportunities and wealth and gifts and approval and um, accolades. You see things that build you up with Jupiter very often. And Jupiter also will expand whatever you give him to expand. I always caution people to be very clear in your mind and watch your mind and what you're thinking about when Jupiter is active. And Jupiter is merged to the exact degree, I mean just a few minutes apart with Nessus. And Nessus is the planet of healing ancestral trauma. It basically says it stops with you. Now is your time. You are here in this life to heal that. What are you going to do about it? Well, Jupiter says, I'm going to give you a really big opportunity. I am going to amplify this opportunity to heal. And what will that look like? Well, I'm going to talk more about that as we keep going because you will see this chart is Every conjunction is about heal it now, heal it now, change now. Are you ready to change now? Have you had enough of the old stuff now? So all I'm going to say, maybe you've already noticed this new moon. It's so beautiful. It's so sexy. It is so sensual with Mars and Venus and Pisces, but shit's going to come up. Um, part of healing is awareness, and something is either already or will come up to make you very uncomfortable. Mm, that includes me, so, <laughs> um, so just embrace that. Open your heart, open your mind to being uncomfortable, to getting news or having a conversation or having a situation that just digs right in to where you hurt, where you would rather hide, what you've had buried all this time. And, and you may also find yourself, because this isn't just happening to you, the people you're in relationship with are also going through the same thing. So they're going to be, at, you'll all, we will all be actively triggering each other. And this is not a bad thing. People are not hurting you when they're triggering you. We're all on this healing journey together. So you are listening to me. You have information that can help you hold your core, hold your center while this is going on. It's not all about you and it is all for you, for your good, for your well-being, for your future. Um, opposite the new moon, that Sun, Moon, Nessus, and Jupiter is Psyche. Psyche's in Virgo. She's at 12 Virgo. And um, Psyche stands for the wound you believe you cannot heal. And those words are very specific and very important. The wound you believe you cannot heal. You are looking at this situation, this pain, this history, and you're thinking, I, I don't know what to do with this. I keep making the same mistakes. The same crap keeps showing up over and over. I work on it, work on it, work on it, work on it, and it keeps coming back. I will never heal this. I will never fix this. I will always be broken. Do you ever feel like that? 
I spent a lot of my life feeling like that. And I did eventually uh, do some healing that let me know I am not broken. And yet, even though I know I am not broken, the same stuff keeps coming up because I am most definitely human. And this is part of being human. That the stuff in our lives does keep that just keeps coming up. It's a, it's a process, and we learn. We learn that we are bigger than that stuff. That's really a simple way of describing what happens. And this is where Jupiter is really helpful, because Jupiter, one of the things he's going to say, "There's your Nessus stuff. Oh, look over across the sky. There's Psyche. You think you'll never get over this? Come with me." We're bigger than that, both of us. He'll show you how to be bigger. And when our greatness, our magnificence, our inner divinity is bigger, then our pain and our struggle can shrink to something more manageable. What if that were true? I just offer that to you as a possibility. What if that were true? If you could imagine, I'm actually bigger than this thing that is hurting me. Well, even that is a process. And so if, if you cannot believe it just because I said it right now, then I'm just simply asking you to imagine what if it were true, that you are bigger than your struggles, your pain, the ancestral trauma you've been carrying around. And that will help you work through it. By the way, Psyche's story is actually one of healing and triumph. She overcame all the odds, and the key to overcoming was she stopped listening to everybody else, and she started listening to her inner voice, and help came from unexpected places. And as she listened, she also did what she was told. She listened and followed the guidance of that inner voice. So. This moon is all about your inner voice. You have it, your recipe for healing unfolding as we speak here. Um, other noteworthy conjunctions. We have two conjunctions in Taurus and one, in Aqu one conjunction in Aquarius. Conjunctions are when planets merge their energies, which is an amplification and a creation of something that is kind of new. So we've got what we've had for a very for a, uh, an entire moon cycle or more. The demonized goddess Lilith Star in late Taurus is still merged with the North Node, which is basically saying, "Make way, make way! The dark goddess is coming." It is saying she is here, embody her, let her into your body, let her into your life, make her an altar, embody, make space for the dark goddess. She is the divine feminine. She knows how to walk through this. And yes, she comes with destructive energy, but she also is birthing everything that we are creating. So. I talk about the dark goddess a lot. I'm just going to leave that energy here in this conversation. And then let's go into earlier Taurus where there is a triple conjunction between Albion, Lilith asteroid, and Uranus. And this is another, if this were the only conjunction in the um, chart, I'd be saying, hey, it's time to heal the disowned feminine. It is time for the disowned feminine to heal her wounds and own her power and show up. So let, let's take that conjunction apart a little bit. Here is Lilith Asteroid. She represents the feminine wound. She represents 
the um, well, she represents what many of us have lived with, not just women, but all of us have this part inside of us, and it is very much associated with feminine qualities or the feminine aspect. And if you are a male body person, a masculine person, and um, the feminine has you've been told that it's really bad for these feminine qualities to show up. And if you're a woman, you have been told that you are really bad because you were born a woman. It is a curse, a problem, a deficiency you were born with. So um, very often that looks like a conflicting double curse of you're not enough because you're female or as a woman, you are way too much. This is the disowned feminine. So here she is. She happens to be sandwiched in between um, Albion and Uranus. Albion and Uranus have been traveling together through Aries and half a cap um, Taurus for a couple of years. Uranus brings things out of the blue unexpected shifts and changes, news, actions, events, epiphanies, spiritual epiphanies. Um, and you didn't see it coming. Albion is the thresholder. He uh, guides people over the portals. He's got a very shamanic essence to him of guiding people into life through birth out of life through death and the thresholds that we have as we live that relate to sexuality these this energy these energy peaks that are part of our natural life we are constantly metabolizing life and our eventual death through orgasm ooh that sounds kind of like a mystery i probably need to come back and talk about that more. In fact, I teach and I teach initiations where we work with that information and energy. And I should be telling you about that sometime, but this is just a little sneak preview. So what happens when we've got the disowned feminine and the thresholder saying it's time to cross through this portal opened up by the new moon, opened up by Venus and her posse. And here it is. This is actually um, in a close harmony. It's singing close harmony with the new moon. Um, 10, 11, 12, Taurus and 12, Pisces. So it's really, these two are vibrating together. They are amplifying and, and increasing each other's energy. It's pretty much just saying the feminine is rising and walking through these changes, these portals, and she's going, she's going to take over and clean up the mess. It is a shift of consciousness that will clean up the mess. Whether it's your personal mess or altogether we're working on the global mess. So that's going on. And then they happen to be, um, oh, you know what? I didn't even mention one of the other uh, conjunctions. It's not, it's not a conjunction. It's... Juno. Juno is in this mix. I'm going to talk about her more later. Um, social justice on behalf of women and children. The biggest shift in our consciousness has to be the underlying values are to support the health and well-being of life. Women, children of all species, not just humans. So Juno is plugged in there. And then there's 
another one. This I, I really love the way that um, Mercury and Saturn are sitting on each other's lap in Aquarius right now. Aquarius, the sign of the collective, of what is good for society. Um, what Ruled by Uranus, by the way, innovative, also ruled by Saturn, who is there right now, the ancient ruler. Um, so Mercury is communication and speed and electronics and technology. It is how, very much how we get things done. Mercury was incredibly important in ancient times when technologies were much more basic than they are now. They could not have imagined what the technology that we are living with now. But Mercury was always there. The alchemical shift, the alchemical reaction, Mercury showed up to activate it, to spark it. Saturn, the crucible, the cauldron. Nowadays, we might say the test tube, the Petri dish. Saturn is about form, containers, rules, and methods. But what Saturn does essentially, and there are many ways you can envision this, is he sets limits and applies pressure. Because things are created when there are limits and pressure. We might look at the pressure of a deadline, the pressure of something, physics, chemistry, applying pressure, um, the earth, geological, pressure that turns coal into diamonds, for example, that makes rocks, that makes plates shift and causes earthquakes. These, these are all Saturn things, pressure and container. And a container, a container can be something that is ephemeral, like a ritual. Before I came on, I called in the directions to make this a sacred space, to allow the magic of what the planets have to say and what is coming through me in the moment and what you, I don't even know who you are. I cannot see you in this format. I do know the numbers have been showing up, so there are people seeing this, but whoever is watching this, you are bringing your desire, your interest, your curiosity, and that is also affecting the sacred space that we are in. I am, without knowing who you are, I am responding to you because we are in this sacred space together, operating by the rules and laws of the universe and ritual and sacredness. So when Saturn and Mercury are there, what happens? alchemy, change. Whatever we put into that crucible is shifting. When I think of Mercury, when I think of Saturn and Mercury together, I think of my high school chemistry, where I learned and that electrons, which are little packets of energy, they're not even a thing, they move around atoms and they get excited and they jump up a state and sometimes they jump from one atom to another and make something completely different and they bond and new substances are made and energy is released and sometimes explosions happen. Oh, now we've got more Uranus happening and Pholus. So that's what's happening. That's what's happening in the collective, Mercury and Saturn. And when we think about the state of the world, it can be a little bit alarming saying, oh no, we start imagining what that can look like. But really, it is something that we can hold inside of us and we can decide. 
We may not be able to control it. We're not the only one in the room. But we can hold it and carry it and walk with it and move with it and allow the shift to happen. So that's what's going on with Mars and Mercury. Ho, ho, ho. This is really all about healing. And healing is not pretty. I'm um, nursing a sore knee that I injured a couple of weeks ago. Uh, not severely, but enough that it's got me mostly grounded. Can't do a lot of the things that I want to do until it heals. And it actually, the healing is actually hurting. I take some medicine to make it, to, to keep me from being, uh, my ner nerves being jangled and all. But when the when medicine wears off, I feel, I feel different kinds of pain and I can actually recognize some of these sensation like itches and burns. That's healing. That's what happens when the body is getting rid of what's damaged and recreating what is healthy. And that is very much what we're all going to be going through this week with um, this new moon and all these energies. So for each of us, what does healing look like? What does it feel like? It's different. Um, there's a lot of energy released, a lot of emotion, and you can go from this really sucks and I can't stand the pain to I'm absolutely elated and overjoyed because I am releasing things that I have held for a really long time. And one thing about, I learned this a long time ago, I was dealing with some heartbreak and I recognized that I was trying really hard not to feel it. And I discovered that the only way to move through it was to feel it. That I, it, it was just like, yeah, if I'm going to heal from this, I'm going to feel it all. I'm going to feel the love. I'm going to feel the anger. I'm going to feel the rage. I'm going to feel the betrayal. I'm going to feel the humiliation, all the things that come with whatever happened. And it's kind of interesting, all that emotion can be kind of addictive because I found myself going back there over and over again because I actually liked all that feeling. So this new moon says, don't do it like that. There's a better way. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you about the better way. Um, I shared, well, here's what you really want to say in the presence of Mars, Venus, Vesta, Pluto, and all these other planets I've just described. You want to say, I will not let my old pain make new decisions for me. How's that for a concept? Did you even know you were doing it? I didn't for a really long time. I didn't realize, and, and even now, it's so sneaky. Oh, that's not me making that decision. This is me from 20 years ago. Me from 50 years ago. What is the one who already has everything I want? What decision is she making right now? Well, that is a fascinating um, uh, exercise of imagination. But it's one that we do in order to shift the old wound running us, the old pain creating our new life. It's liberating and it's terrifying. So we have a ritual that will help you embody that. And I'm going to describe it before we finished. I wrote about it to my newsletter and in a post here. But I'm, I'm going to speak it out loud because the words that you hear are very powerful as well. Ritual is a way to embody healing, change, and desire.
And then after you do the ritual, you reinforce the new as you metabolize the old. So the ritual, we can keep doing rituals all through. Ritual can keep reminding us because we shift in increments sometimes. Um, but we also practice and work to make the shift real and part of our bodies and part of our lives. So here are some stages healing goes through. Awareness, feeling, release, forgiveness, decide, step into the next, practice, and always self-love, self-acceptance. And right now, this new moon, this final moon, the moon in Pisces, planets and ancestors are aligned to support the process for all of us. Now you only have control over yourself. You can join with other people, like-minded, do ritual with them, get their support. All of you work on this together. I recommend you do that. Um, but each of us is self-responsible for our own healing in this way. At the same time, you don't have to do it alone. In fact, you can't really do it alone. It's a paradox, isn't it? So just recognize that the energy in this chart, this moon in Pisces, can do a lot of the work for us if we hold the container and let that energy pour through and allow emotion, feeling, awareness, decision, action to work through us. So let's talk, um, close with the big quadruple conjunction in Capricorn. I've talked about this a lot, and so if you want to go back and hear more of what I said, just find the stuff on the page or go to the YouTube channel. Um, past new and full moon readings and several of the Venus readings are all there. The barest summary of it is Venus, the goddess in her light and glory version. Love, attraction, abundance, beauty, the highest values, opulence. This is Venus. Mars, the essence of masculine, the divine masculine. He is a lover, a warrior, a protector, and a go-getter. And he does the bidding of the goddess. She visions, she knows what's needed. She says, go get this, go do that, go accomplish that. And Mars does it. This is one of the essential things that patriarchy has wrong. It has relegated the feminine to subservience and commodity and possession. And, and in some rare instances, put the feminine on a pedestal as an ideal to inspire. But patriarchy has stolen the feminine's voice and wisdom and co-opted all of that to serve its own ends so that we are all taught to be good daughters of the patriarchy except that most, many, many of us, if you are listening to me, you are probably a very bad daughter of the patriarchy. Yay! <laughs> because we will have to become bad daughters of the patriarchy if we are going to shift into this world that is Juno-oriented, Venus-valued, and where the masculine understands his role in the partnership, not domination. And Vesta the priestess is here right with them and she is making all this sacred. She is going between the divine and the world and she is saying this is sacred, this sacred marriage, this change, this shift. It is for the highest good of life. It is for the evolution of our 
consciousness, our hearts, the salvation, the very real salvation of the planet. And within each of us, it is our inner erotic flame, our life force, that Vesta is nurturing and keeping going. And right now she is here saying, be devoted to this union, be devoted to this shift, be devoted to this partnership of sacred feminine, sacred masculine, and healing, healing the wounds of generations, eons, millennia, where the balance has been destroyed and forgotten. We have a lot of remembering to do, and we have to we have to de-armor, decalcify, heal all of the ways that those memories, deep cellular memories have been crushed and forgotten and I, I, the, the word that's coming up it's not grammatically correct but they have been feared out of us we have become afraid of our own truth because we were told our truth was evil so this new moon is waking that up and this holy trio is already, as of the moon, I mean right now, it is connected to Pluto. And Pluto, ah, the god of the underworld. So we have this light-filled, orgasmic, and sacred energy standing at the gates of hell with Pluto, Hades. And he's bringing the inevitability of the underworld. All this creative power the Holy Three are bringing in requires a sacrifice. Something must die. That which is lesser must die. That which is over must die. That which is used up and metabolized must die. And so within us, the ritual I'm going to describe will help you connect with what must die in you because something new is just waiting to be born. In fact, I did a meditation this afternoon and realized that it's, it's so already here. I personally am standing at a node in the web of life where I could keep going and carry that dead thing with me or I could choose the strand in which the dead thing has been dead a long time and the born thing is here in full force. And you also stand there. This new moon is that kind of junction. New life is waiting. What will it take? Healing, a death and space for rebirth. And what is happening 14 hours before the new moon? Venus emerges from her shadow phase of retrograde. December 19th, 2021, Venus station retrograde at 2629 conjunct Pluto. And all these months later, she Station direct on January 29th, and now she has moved forward and at around 9.30 Eastern Time on March 1st, tomorrow night, she's going to slide past that point and she will come out into the daylight, metaphorically speaking, and she... And Pluto is there, Mars is there, Vesta is there. This is extraordinary energy. This happens pretty frequently. You know, Mercury go, goes retrograde and comes back in stations three times a year. Venus does so every 18 months or so. Um... But 
conjunct Pluto, Mars, and Vesta, and trine the dark goddess, Lilith Star? Never. So rarely to be never in our lifetimes. This is extraordinary. There are other things that are extraordinary about this United States Pluto return. Um, it's, it is so big on a global scale, but it's also big on the personal scale. And that's where I want you to take it. That is where you can personally work with it and let it go out, shift. Shift globally by transforming internally. So she's, what happens when Venus hangs out with Pluto? Well, she needs him. She is all about creating. She is all about sensuality and sexuality. She is all about beauty, values, and abundance. She is all about life. And life does not exist without death. So this moment where Venus is mer emerging from her retrograde shadow, standing by Pluto with her consort and her priestess with her. There has never been a moment of more life and more possibility and more potential for you. And the irony is, yes, we can do a lot. Sex magic, pleasure, orgasms, celebrations, rituals and drumming and dancing. We can do a lot. But the real shift will happen in stillness and silence, listening to this new moon, feeling what comes up. Once again, we're in a paradox. So imagine sitting with a circle of people where you do this little ritual that I'm about to describe. I say little because it's short and simple. And then you sit in silence and you listen on behalf of the collective. And then you share. And then you go home, you sleep and you dream and you're dreaming for the collective, and you get together again, or post, you know, write each other an email, and share. That part's not written down. <laughs> so I'm going to close by describing the ritual that I wrote about, and I did it. I did it yesterday morning. I went out before sunrise. And I stood. I could not see Mars. It was too tiny. And Vesta is also even tinier. And Pluto was there. And he's way far away. But I could see Venus. And I could see the crescent. Um, and you can tap into this energy all week. It'll be there for you. And if you're seeing this even later, just do it. There is no such thing as time. So here's the ritual. Um, and these are ideas. You can make it your own, but the simpler the better. So supplies, a journal or some loose paper, a pen, a candle, and anything else you like, whatever makes you feel like you're in sacred space. Uh, crystals or herbs or oils or feathers or calling in directions, calling in elements, what, whatever you do that creates your Saturn, your, your container for your ritual. And spend some time, ideally, if you are able um, to get up before dawn and go and look at Venus. The moon has moved on, but Venus is still there. And know that Vesta and Pluto and Mars are there with her, whether you can see them or not. Um, if you can do that, there is a certain power to it. But if you're in your house looking out the window or looking just to the southeast, 
because that's where she'll be um, if you're in the northern hemisphere or maybe it's broad daylight you do this whenever you can but I'm gonna speak as if you were setting your alarm for 4 a.m. and getting up and doing the ritual then so spend some time at night before bed journaling your desire you want to write a page or two of what do you really really want what are you creating and just let it pour out and it doesn't matter what it is because your desires are sacred and they are also divine instructions and then at the same time you're thinking about your desires you're gonna get these little taps like oh do you really want that or that's too much or how would you ever get that or do you you know and so what is going to happen are the lists of I don't know how the objections the old voices when somebody ridiculed or thank you for wanting something these voices strike doubt well they are gifts to you because as they come to awareness you make a separate list on a piece of paper or on a page you'll cut out of your journal just make a list of those things that come up what is your mind saying to you about why you can't have that and then wake up before dawn gather your candle your matches um, your journals and papers and review your clear desire what did you write do you have anything you want to add to it and then take a glance at your list of blocks you know kind of you refresh your memory but don't give a whole lot of energy to that because it's written down and we're going to do something with it and you can look out and watch for Venus to rise if you have a clear view and a clear sky uh, you can go outside and take your stuff with you um, so here's what you do wherever you are you're looking to the southeast if you can see Venus then you know you've got it and you place the book with your desires or maybe a symbol a stone or a candle or something that symbolizes your desire place that in front of you it's between you and Venus Venus is looking at that and then turn around 180 degrees and put a candle a metal bowl I should have said that at the beginning get a metal bowl and crumple up your list of things that are obstacles or blocks and if you are able to light that on fire safely and burn it to ash do so if you cannot for whatever reason you can rip it into tiny shreds and then dissolve it in water and throw it in the trash or give it to the earth later on um, but one way or the other you are going to turn that list of obstacles and blocks into particles that can be digested metabolized used up And then in your own words say something like I release the past I no longer look behind me my old wounds are no longer making decisions for me what happened in the past is over I love and accept myself completely and I release the hold I once believed the past had over me and you might uh, want to jot some of these down in advance um, so that you can feel the words or they may come to you in the moment it's not about getting my words it's about expressing um, a real it's expressing release keep it simple but in a way that is loving self-loving non-judgmental these blocks and obstacles are not evil they are simply finished right so when the paper let's see okay when this is done 
you are going to turn 180 again where you are now facing your desire and Venus. And speak your desire. Speak your desire out loud. Say it three times, the magical three. So if you wrote a whole lot of desires, you know, kind of, you can distill it into, you'll, you'll know what the main thing is that you want. So speak it three times and put force behind it. You can get louder, breathe, and let that sound rise up from your belly. And add feelings and emotions every time you say it. And then begin to see your desire and feel yourself already there, having it. And you might even feel kind of a sucking sensation, a whoosh, as the old blocks recede out your back. And the desire comes in, it comes towards you. Um, and then you can sit with your, your journal. If you're outside and it's cold, you might want to come in, but you can write out more stories of your future self who already has it and get more and more clear about what you want and begin to practice something that does take practice being the new person. Your future self is not out there. She is here. He is here. This is kind of advanced work, but it's so simple and you have to start somewhere. And the only way to do it is to start. So when you feel that your ritual is complete, Thank the energies, any of the directions or ancestors you called in to help you. And blow out any candles that you may have lit. And then you can have a cup of coffee or go to bed or both. If it's, you know, sun's coming up. Um, and then over the next few hours and days, keep your eyes open. Because you have just told the universe and your soul, you put them on the same page, You've told them that you want something different, that you are committed to something different. You are tapping into Vesta's devotion and that you have let go. And so you have put them on notice and you also continue to ask for their help and practice. And that means you install new beliefs. Um, Instead of whatever the obstacles were, you write the opposite. Uh, instead of, you keep visioning and saying, you know, you might just say, I want, I desire to meet my life partner. My life partner is here. My life partner is just around the corner. My life partner, I am already the person who is ready and available for that kind of relationship. That's one concrete example. It might be money, it might be ease, it might be health. I am, I am, I am, I have, I am grateful for, I thank you. And this is something that you do over and over again to reinforce what started in the ritual. And that chaos and the old wounds may come up again for healing. They, they may not want to let you go, but you just love them and say, nope, you're behind me. Keep your eyes forward on, you can basically say you're looking at a mirror. Everything that you want is staring back at you in the mirror. <sighs> and get help, get whatever help you need with a friend who's on the same wavelength, who can hold the space and vibration, a therapist, a healer, a coach. Um, 
You may discover that you need to go into deep work like initiation, reach out if that's something that is calling to you, or start with a divine feminine astrology reading and listen. Find out where all of this energy is in your own chart. And through it all, hold your desire in your mind and heart and keep going. And enjoy yourself in the portal.